Season 3, Episode 2, Homestead, Part 2, written by Robert S.C. Cutler, read by Fentress O. Moore. Larry Carroll yelled for his wife and son to get out of the way and then blasted off the head of the strange, vicious animal that had trapped his daughter in the hall closet. Particles of blood, flesh, and bone sprayed in all directions, splattering everything in their path. After the smoke cleared, Larry knew his aim had been good when he saw the lifeless carcass lying on the hardwood floor. Janice's ears were ringing from the concussion of her husband firing both barrels at the same time. She stumbled to her feet and pushed her way past him. The sight of the buckshot riddled hall closet door made her heart skip a beat. Oh my God, what did you do? Hannah! She screamed as she threw open the door. Hannah was crying and still hidden beneath the pile of fallen coats. Janice checked her daughter for any sign of injuries and thankfully found none. She scooped her up and then passed her off to the waiting arms of her father. You need to get that truck running so we can get out of here, Janice lectured Larry. Give me a couple of hours and I'll have her running good. A couple of hours? What if there are more of those things running about? We might not have a couple of hours, Janice yelled. Now take it easy, hon. You know I don't work well under stress. Hey, is that your brother and sister? Larry said. Sure is. I think we've just been rescued. You guys okay? Asked Joyce. Is Hannah bleeding? No, it's for me. That thing bit me on the arm, Janice said and then burst into tears. Thank God you're here. Joyce examined the bite marks that more resembled a thousand needle punctures on Janice's arm. What in the world has been chewing on your arm? Looks like you got attacked by a pack of rattlesnakes. I'm not sure. It looked like a hairless dog. Larry blew the thing's head clean off. Janice laughed. Well, it sure did a number on you. Joyce sighed. Get me the first aid kit out of the car, won't you, Jay? Where is it? Ask Buddy. He's the one that packed it. Jay lumbered over to the Buick, calling for Buddy who was still in the back seat. Joyce needs the first aid kit. Buddy stretched and yawned. I don't have it. Didn't you pack it? I thought Joyce did. He shrugged. It was on the kitchen counter last time I saw it. Great. Janice is hurt and we really need that kit. Are we going soon? If we leave now, I can get a bite to eat before the league starts. Jay threw up his arms in disgust and walked away. You are pathetic. Where is it? Joy asked Jay as he walked away from the car. Buddy forgot to pack it, Jay yelled. Figures, Joy said. That man gets more worthless every day. It's okay, Janice said. We have one in the fifth wheeler. Logan, get that box full of bandages and stuff from the trailer. It's in the cabinet by the bathroom. Logan took off running across the grass yelling, Hello, Uncle Buddy, as he passed the car. Get your worthless butt out of that car and help, Joyce bellowed at Buddy. Larry put Hannah down and kissed the top of her head. I've got to get that water pump finished if we're ever going to get out of here. Maybe Buddy could help you out. Hell, he needs something to do, Joyce said. Larry laughed and waved his hands. No, thank you. You know, I would help out if I could, but I'm all thumbs when it comes to that mechanical stuff, Jay said. Don't worry about it, Larry said. Logan's a good assistant. Logan returned with the box full of first aid supplies and handed it off to his aunt. Your dad needs help with that old truck, Joy said. Okay, Logan said as he took off running after Larry. Joyce examined Janice's wounded arm and then generously poured hydrogen peroxide over the puncture marks, making Janice wince as it foamed and bubbled up on her skin. She then took out the bottle of isopropyl alcohol and unscrewed the cap. Are you kidding me? You're using both? Janice protested. I read online that peroxide doesn't really disinfect, so I'm just being cautious, Joyce said as she poured the clear liquid onto the wound as well. Ouch! Janice yelled. Then why not just use the alcohol in the first place? Because mom always used peroxide when we were kids, so I still kind of trust it. I've got to go, mom. Hannah squirmed while Joyce was wrapping Janice's arm with gauze. Use the one in the workshop, Janice said. Hannah crinkled up her nose. No, it's yucky in there. 
Janice agreed. Your dad's not a very good maid, but I don't want you back in that house, so use the one in the fifth wheeler. Without hesitation, Hannah took off running toward the trailer and also said hello to her Uncle Buddy as she passed the car. Clenching her fists and jaw, Joyce yelled so loud her voice carried across the open fields. Buddy, if you don't get your worthless, lazy butt out of that car this very instant, I'm going to come over there and pull you out by the short hairs on your neck. Knowing his wife meant business, Buddy threw open the door and jumped out. Trying to save face, he chuckled and claimed he was just about to go and see if Larry needed help. He doesn't need your help. You can go with Jay and... Joyce looked over at Janice and shrugged. They can make sure the horse trailer is packed and ready, Janice said. Jay nodded. Are you using the Ford or Chevy? Ford for the horse trailer and the Chevy for the fifth wheeler. Hitch is on the Chevy and it's all gassed up if you want to hook it up. Luckily, we just had a diesel delivery last week, but our old Ford runs on gas and has just about a quarter tank. Oh, that's not good, Joyce said. We noticed the gas stations were closing starting about an hour and a half south of here. Most of northern Oklahoma is without power. My car can handle towing the horse trailer if need be, Jay said. Janice examined her freshly bandaged arm. If Larry can't fix that old truck, we'll have no other choice. Tell you what, I'll just let Larry know he can give fixing that old clunker a rest and we can be on the road within a half hour, Jay said. Janice smiled and closed her eyes as the huge weight was lifted from her shoulders. Thank you, big brother. Overhearing the conversation, Buddy made an about face and started to walk away from the horse trailer. Did I hear you say that we were leaving in a half hour? Because that will work for me if that's the case. Joyce looked up toward the sky. Why me, God? Why did you have to saddle me with that man? If you don't mind, Janice, I'm going to use the little boy's room in the workshop, Buddy said. I'm just about swimming in beer, if you know what I mean. Help yourself, Buddy, Janice replied, trying hard to keep from laughing. And to think I thought he was cute when you two were first dating, Janice said. How many years now? Twenty? Don't remind me, Joyce laughed. Put down those wrenches, Larry. Time to hit the road, Jay announced as he and Buddy walked into the workshop. You can hitch the horse trailer to my Buick. By the way, have you given any thought to where you're going to board salt and pepper? Because our cousin has plenty of room on his ranch and... Larry? Where'd you go? Buddy looked up and all around the workshop, taking in the two-story building. Man, I would love one of these things. I've got a bunch of projects I'm just dying to start. That's funny. I didn't think you would need such a big space just to watch TV. Jay egged his brother-in-law on. Buddy didn't get the joke. I was thinking having a radio in the shop would be just fine, but a TV is a good idea too. I could have sworn I saw both Larry and Logan walk in here, Jay said. I guess we can just go outside and get the trailer hitched and horses loaded. Sounds good. I really don't want to waste any more time. We'll be pushing it if we don't leave soon, Buddy said. Really? What's the big deal if you do miss one night of bowling? Asked Jay. It's all about dedication and loyalty to my team, Buddy said. We're only 30 pins out of first place and bowling a real tough team tonight. If I don't show, they'll have to use my 170 average and I know I can bowl better than that. What if you don't bowl better than your average? Wouldn't it have been better to help Larry and Janice out in a time of crisis? Both your team and family would win. Buddy waved his hands. You're missing the point, Jay. It's all about loyalty. No, I think you're missing the point, and I'm done with this conversation. Jay dismissed Buddy with a shake of his head and then cupped his hands together. Larry! Logan! Time to return to my rented beer, Buddy announced and started walking toward the bathroom. Stopping short, he gazed down at the cement floor with a puzzled look on his face. I thought they were working on the water pump. Yeah, so what? Asked Jay. Well, there's a big puddle of something red on the floor. Looks like transmission fluid to me. Irritated with the sideshow antics of his brother-in-law, Jay wanted to ignore him but couldn't after he had a look at the fluid himself. Cold chill ran down his spine and a knot formed in the pit of his stomach. Not only was there a puddle of red fluid on the floor, there was also a smear of the same substance leading to the back door. Jay proceeded with caution, stepping around the puddle and walking around the front of the truck. That's blood, buddy. Something's not right here. 
A second trail leading from the workbench to the bathroom caught his eye. The door was ajar and the light was off, but Jake could hear somebody inside. As he drew closer, the distinct sound of heavy breathing and something snapping and popping prompted him to call out. Is that you in there, Larry? You okay? Is Logan with you? A low, reverberating growl was the only response he received. Something large shifted within the bathroom. The door swiveled back and forth and then opened wide. Out of the dark room, a figure roughly the size of a man appeared, walking on all fours and still growling. Jay froze at the bizarre sight. His breathing became shallow and his heart raced. Did Larry get a new dog? asked Buddy. Beads of sweat formed on Jay's forehead and upper lip. The taste was salty on his tongue. Go get the girls. There's something I write about this. Not right at all. Not seeing what Jay was seeing. Buddy turned and casually started back outside. Okay, maybe he and the kid are out there too. You know, Janice and Larry ought to put a leash on that dog. He doesn't sound very nice. Joyce and Janice were relaxing beneath a large corkscrew willow on some old lawn furniture with their feet propped up and enjoying a beer from Joyce's cooler. It was the first truly relaxing moment for Janice since the earthquake the night before. After she and Larry first discovered the extent of the damage, they had spent half the night cleaning out the fifth wheel trailer and making it habitable for the entire family to sleep in. What are you going to do about your house? Joyce asked Janice. By the looks of it, you'll have to bulldoze the entire thing and start from scratch. I know, Janice said. Larry is just sick in his heart about it. The house had been in his family for over a hundred years. His grandfather was born in Hannah's room. We would never have guessed that an earthquake would destroy it. Maybe a tornado or fire. Welcome to our world. All of that fracking down our way has us really rocking and rolling these days. Oklahoma City will probably get hit next. I'm just glad you guys are here, Janice said. As soon as we get to a place where we can get a signal on our phone, Larry's going to call his dad and brother to see if they can help us set up a mobile home while the house is rebuilt. Include us, please. I know Jay wouldn't hesitate to help. Just don't count on Buddy. I can't even get the man to replace a burnout light bulb these days, Joyce scoffed. Oh, and speak of the devil, look who's headed our way. What do you need now, buddy? I thought you and Jay were going to get the horse trailer packed. Buddy threw his arms up in the air and sighed. Well, we can't find Larry or Logan anywhere. And that dog of yours, Janice, is growling at Jay and carrying on like it wants to bite him. What do you need Larry for? You guys know how to pack a horse trailer by yourselves? Joyce complained. Processing half of what Buddy was saying, Janice just sat there staring past her brother-in-law. The word dog stirred up memories of their recently deceased border collie skipper, sweet and always following her around the farm. Then the image of the strange-looking animal that was roughly the size of a dog attacking her daughter and biting Janice on the arm flashed through her mind. She sat up straight in the chair with big eyes and her mouth wide open. We don't have a dog, Janice gasped. Oh, that's right, Joy said. Didn't he die just last month? It's got to be another one of those things. What in the world are you talking about? Asked Joyce. The thing. The animal that bit my arm. They're vicious little bastards, Janice yelled. We need to find Hannah. I think she's still in the fifth wheel, Joyce calmly stated. I'll go and find her. The sound of a full-grown man screaming out in terror echoed across the front yard. Buddy, Joyce, and Janice all paused, staring at one another in disbelief. Jay appeared from the far side of the workshop, looking back and stumbling forward. Close on his heels, a dark figure was crouched low to the ground as if stalking the large man. Frantic, Janice jumped up and down and pointed. That's one of them. Do something, buddy, before that animal bites him, Joyce pleaded. Hey, you, Buddy yelled while waving his arms in the air. Get away from him. Get now. The creature stopped and turned its attention towards Buddy and the two women. Buddy kept on yelling even as it started their way in a fast trot. Seeing his chance to escape, Jay started to run toward the workshop, but before he made it ten feet, two more of the creatures darted out through the open cellar doors and took him down by his neck and torso. His cries for help were quickly silenced when one of the brutal monsters ripped out his throat, while the other one dragged him to and then down the cellar steps. Buddy took off running in the direction of the Buick. Frightened for their lives, 
Joyce and Janice followed with the creature swiftly gaining ground. Out of shape and slower than Janice, Joyce started to fall back and then stumble to the ground, the palms of her hands skidding against the dirt and gravel. Leaping over Joyce, the creature kept up its pursuit of Buddy and Janice. With a swipe of its razor-sharp claws, Janice's right calf and Achilles tendon were torn wide open, causing her to collapse to the ground. As Hannah looked on from the doorway of the fifth wheel, her mother was taken by the neck and violently shaken until her body became limp. Buddy reached for the Buick and heard his niece scream for her mother. Torn between rescuing Hannah and getting into the safety of the car, he froze. Looking over at Joyce for guidance, like he had often done over the past 20 years, he witnessed his terrified wife being overtaken by three more of the creatures and then barbarically torn apart. Help me, Uncle Buddy! Hannah pleaded as more of the creatures appeared from behind the fifth wheeler. Before Buddy could react, one of the bigger creatures leapt into the trailer, chasing Hannah into the back. Trembling and blubbering like a small, scared child, Buddy awkwardly fumbled his way into the driver's seat. After starting the car, he yanked the gear shift lever down hard into reverse and flew back a good 30 feet. To his right, the fifth wheel was violently shaking. The screams and cries of his niece Hannah had been silenced. All around him, more of the malevolent demons were gathering. Not wanting to end up like the rest, he shifted hard into drive and floored it, never once looking back as he drove to safety down the long, narrow drive.